So I just want to thank everybody for coming. This is a new experiment that we're starting called the Master Series. And the Master Series is kind of our way to uh, help spread the, spread the goodness, spread the wealth. So you know, one of the things that Geekdom has as an asset, I feel, is access to really smart people. Um, and I think that uh, this is the year where we take advantage of that and spread their knowledge to the members. And so that is the attempt. So this is the first ever Master Series, and I'm really happy with our first speaker. She is not ridiculously nervous right now. So nobody look over there. <laughs> Just look at the terrorist looking guy. <laughs> Sorry. So uh, just a quick intro. Uh, I'm, I'm super, super pumped about this. We've got a ton of really great speakers coming in. Um, next month, we're going to have David Bryce, who's the, fanat the godfather of fanatical support at Rackspace. Um, after that, we have a really amazing woman named Kathy Kirsten, who might not be in the audience or might be in the audience. Um, and we're just, w our goal is to just pummel you with amazing information and experts. So that's what the Master Series is. Uh, we hope you guys can make it to as many as, as you can, but if not, we're gonna be recording them. We're gonna put them online in the member portal so that part of the, exclus the, of the exclusiveness of having a Geek the membership is getting to see the Master Series. So, without further ado, I'm gonna do a little intro to Christy St. Martin, born in Bermuda, but then turned into a Canadian, um, and, we're, and that's okay. Um, and she's, she's a huge sports fan, which I'll, I'll let her tell you about. But she started her own personal blog called All Things Christy, which she became kind of a legend for. She was a big deal. She kind of grew a cult following. Um, and then later actually went, uh, wrote and managed a VH1 website called Best Week Ever. Um, also had the Los Angeles Times gave her her own blog. And she contributed to the LA Times Hero Complex. I guess that was a, is that a series or is that a? It was about sci-fi and geek culture. It was culture nerdy stuff, and yeah. Nerdy that's stuff what and video you're, games and, yeah. yeah. Really cool stuff. Really cool That's things. what we care about. Um, she also used to manage the social media for J.P. Morgan Chase and for L'Oreal. Kind of a big deal, I think. I've never heard of those companies. <laughs> and is apparently, uh, currently the co-founder of two online applications, oh, web yeah. apps, that are getting launched this year. Is that right? Yes. All right, so enough of the brown guy, on to the pretty lady. Uh, please join me in welcoming the first kickoff of our Master Series, Christy St. Martin. Thank you. Oh my God. Thank you, Lorenzo. Um, first of all, I didn't trip, so feeling pretty good <laughs> for starters. Nailed it. Um, Okay, so basically what I want to do is kind of explain that like it's really not that hard out there. I think it's just something that like what you specialize in what you do and you're an expert in, this is kind of my field. And I hope that some of it uh, resonates with you and you can kind of take it and apply it to your own work. Um, but I just kind of want to explain like it's not hard. It's just a matter of getting out, doing it, getting more familiar and finding out what really works for you. Um, and obviously, if you need uh, help with your PowerPoint presentations for your uh, business, I am your lady, because <laughs> nailed it again. Uh, <laughs> all right, this is a button, pressing it. Whoop, which way this way? Already nailed it. Okay, uh, so yeah, this is kind of what I want to go over today, so just a brief <laughs> overview. So first, I kind of want to explain like why you're here, what brought you to the internet, why you need to use social media for yourself. Um, what you want it to do, uh, whether it's for you or for others or both. Uh, engagement 101 and influence. So I'll explain the art of being pretty much the world's biggest fans to your fans, because that to me is everything that is important with social media. It's less to do with you and everything to do with the people um, that are following you. Uh, Operation Brand Hipster. Uh, so for those of us who are uh, definitely part of a generation that didn't immediately know that when you get a sandwich delivered to your table, you were supposed to take a picture of it first before eating. If that's something you're like, I have no idea that that was protocol for lunch, uh, I'm going to explain that now you can train yourself too to be like, that looks like a delicious sandwich and I'm gonna share it with the world. Hashtag delish. Um, so next one would be my social media checklist, which I actually created for the company that I'm working with right now, which is called HeroX, which some of you might know of, that's in, uh, works with uh, Geekdom for their Ooh. MX challenge for San Antonio to turn uh, San Antonio into the next big major tech hub, which is really exciting. And I do their community development and digital strategy. So 
Um, I also just recently um, started training their new community manager, Julie, who I will probably put on the spot a few times today. Yeah, she's amazing and she picked it up super fast. Um, and you can say like, oh, it's regeneration, but truth, she's just really smart. Uh, anyways, moving on, and then of course Q&A, because I know that what I'm doing right now is mostly focusing on the importance of why it's so <laughs> necessary for you to be a really good listener online. And I focus on that, so I'm probably going to skip over a lot of the basics that you might have, so please feel free to interrupt me at any point in time. Uh, and then afterwards, any of the questions I don't cover. Bam. Uh, <laughs> excuses to pope pictures of cats. Standard protocol for me. So anyways, uh, so why are you here? What's your deal? Um, and so the one thing I kind of want to say from a business perspective is it used to be a time period where um, if you had a complaint, you knew you had to call a particular complaint line and everyone would do the eye roll thing and you're like, there's some number, I have to go to the website, and, like scroll through, who do I need to complain to, how do I do this? And unfortunately, that is not how it works anymore. You might have that number on your site, but I'm gonna go ahead and assume that only like 1% of people are actually still gonna do that. They're, they think they can contact you on all of your social platform pages and it is your responsibility now to respond. And not just respond, but respond as fast as you possibly can. And that is very difficult from a tech startup place because you're either bootstrapping it for yourself or you have a small team and everyone feels like what they're doing is way more important than responding to like a simple question on Twitter, but it's actually the reverse. Um, so responding to that question on Twitter or Facebook is way more important than whatever you thought was key for that day. And that even goes as far as meeting investors. Um, for example, I think your investor would understand that your clients and your future fans are going to be more important than that conversation. If they're going to invest in you, wouldn't it be nice to know that you care more about that than this guy in a suit. Um, so anyways, uh, basically what I want to do is explain that like real-time interaction is like 100% where you need to focus your time. I like the 30-minute rule, which is like unless it's the middle of the night and that's fair, you were allowed to sleep as a human being. You can even maybe respond in the morning with, sorry it took like you know, eight hours to respond. Uh, I actually had to sleep last night. You can make jokes about it, you can be lighthearted, people understand. But as far as during the day goes, really as fast as possible. And with that comes down to, it's, it seems really common sense, but the truth is it's so easy to get overwhelmed, especially when you start to take off with where they're hitting you up. And there's a lot of really great platforms and tools that you can use to kind of have it all in one um, center. Hootsuite's great. Um, what I'm gonna suggest that anyone does at this particular uh, presentation today is if you can write down your email address, I'm gonna send like a PDF format of a bunch of different things that are really good, like explaining who influencers are, like what platforms I recommend for your company. Um, but I didn't wanna do that here. I just really wanted to drive it home that this stuff is super important. Um, and the stuff that's super important is you being a real human being to your company. Um, so the nice thing that you get to do as a startup is not be <laughs> JP Morgan Chase, right? So you get to be personal. You don't have to do canned responses. In fact, I urge you not to do canned responses. You don't, like, it's great to set like a guideline, right? Because people are gonna ask a lot of the standard questions. So I truly believe that you should create a document uh, prepared and just literally brainstorm all the crazy questions you think someone may ask you online about what it is that you do, right? So have a rough idea of like, if they're gonna be like, uh, where, how do I register? You know, uh, if, uh, I don't, how do I unsubscribe from newsletters? Um, all that stuff you can create, but when you actually choose to respond, you wanna personalize that as much as possible. Um, that's your opportunity to show your personality of your company and who you are. And so, one of the things that <laughs> I think is really cool about startups is that like, because it's your baby, you're the best person to be the community manager uh, when it first start out. And then ideally, as your company grows, you want your community manager to be your number two. Uh, and this is where I think a lot of companies get it wrong. So companies like JP Morgan Chase, I keep railing on them, but I really, I hope that I never have to work for them again. <laughs> They're gonna watch this and be like, why do you keep making fun of us? Um, so, but the thing is, like, a lot of companies just haven't figured it out that um, interns are not the person for this job. Uh, think of a bank 
maybe not JP Morgan Chase because we give a break. Um, <laughs> name another bank. Oh, can't think of any. Nervous. Uh, anyways, so when you walk in, the tellers, I don't know how it is in the States, but in Canada, they hate their job. <laughs> so like, and in fairness, I have worked in a bank and I hated my job too. And the thing is, like, you get paid nothing, right? People ask you questions you barely know how to respond to because you've had like a week of training and you're supposed to know everything about banking. Um, now I'm an expert in credit cards because I've had to do it both personally in a bank and then work for an actual bank. So I kind of feel pretty smart about it. Which is, if you have any questions about credit, I am also your girl. Um, so anyways, my point is they hate their job. Um, they haven't yet figured out a way to make them the most important people in their company and they should be. The truth is, a lot of it is just like, oh, you know, we'll get, if it's really bad, we'll get our manager to it. But that's the face of the bank. Like, most people have no idea what's going on. They don't do, like, stock investments. They're not talking to anything else. They have no idea. Their only experience of a bank is their teller, and it's this miserable person who's like, please don't get mad at me. Don't ask me a question I don't know. I don't know the difference of my cards yet. Just please take this piece of paper and read it for yourself and come back to me when you've made your mind up. And for community managers, you can't have that. Um, when you have a company, you shouldn't have to run it through a series of people, right, to get approval to post something. Um, and what JP Morgan does, and oh my god, why do I keep saying it them? It's because they're really everything that's wrong in social. Um, but <laughs> anyways, what happens is, um, as a community manager, uh, you're working with third-party content agencies, right? And then you're also dealing with client reps within JP Morgan Chase. And then, even worse, you have to deal with their legal department. So, in <laughs> we have pre-approved canned responses that have all been pre-approved by legal. You think I could just take that and post it in the response. That is not how it works. I then send, I, I get the, the post, it comes up. I'm like, okay, this guy, it's like he can't find the branch. Uh, he needs a branch locator tool. Uh, very basic question. Again, not really understanding why this involves a legal team when we've already discussed this about like eight months ago. Um, I send this to the client rep in a nice little email, which takes me probably like three minutes to do, uh, which is explaining the time date, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, so and so has responded that they cannot find the branch in K uh, Kentucky. Uh, I recommend not <laughs> we should post. I recommend we post, as we discussed eight months ago, the locator tool app with their name tagged. They then go, thanks, Christy, that's awesome. They send it to the legal department and we wait eight hours. That poor person in their car trying to find just a bank, like just a bank app, like has long since probably looked it up on Google on their phone, right? And by the time I get legal approval to post it, it's eight hours later and I'm already formulating the apology response because I already know like we have failed you and I am super sorry. And that is what it's like for a big company and you, don't, you get to avoid all of that. Um, but this is exactly why you have to empower your community managers. So when you get to the point where it's no longer your job anymore, you have to let this person know just as much about your company as you do. Um, and sometimes you can't do that in pay structures, so what I recommend is um, letting them know they're the most important person in this company and like finding ways to like involve them and keep them looped in and keep them motivated and let them come up with really cool ideas to showcase your company. Um, and like that's, as far as I'm concerned, like that, that to me is a perfect, perfect community manager job. Like I don't know who wouldn't want that. And like if you can sit there and go and you can't pay them the way that you want to, by the time you look for the next job, they're in that interview and they know everything about that company. Would you not hire the person who knew everything about a company they worked for despite like as if they were the CEO, uh, I would be amazed. So, and that's kind of where I am today, is that I, I chose to make the decision to learn everything about credit cards, right? I didn't have to, I could have just done the, I know community management, and that should be enough, and I'll just stay to pay attention to this canned response list, I cared. Um, and those are the people that you hire, <laughs> just for the record. <laughs> okay, moving on to the next big thing, it's like again, real time, super important. Be honest, be yourself. Um, your company is you. What I think is most important is that you have personality. Um, I hate nothing more than a Twitter page that looks like a generic feed, right? Of just like, so and so Mashable article, read this. And there's no like personality to it. There, you're not taking the time to maybe see if there's like a Star Wars joke you could incorporate into it. Like, if you care, and the thing is, if your audience are the kind of people that like Star Wars jokes, then like you have a 
various Wikipedia pages that you could pull jokes from if you can't remember quotes. And you have like endless options for uh, photos you can use and content. Um, so it's about knowing your company so well and your audience that you can speak authentically as if they're just a bud, right? And that's the approach that you get to do that JP Morgan can't do or L'Oreal can barely do. Um, anyway, so the other thing that I love doing is people don't, I don't do this because I'm just, I'm someone who's been online and since like mud days on dial up. So I never had a problem just starting a conversation or saying something stupid online and knowing that I just said something stupid online and it is there forever. Um, and please don't Google me because there's so much stupid stuff that I regret. Uh, but the point is you have to not be scared and you have to not panic. And the point is you probably are going to make a mistake, but it's more important to make the mistake to learn what not to do again than to just be like afraid to type a single tweet, right? Um, and I think what the best thing to do is like go have to model it after your favorite accounts. Like if you've ever seen something like a Facebook page that does something really great, um, think of it and brainstorm ideas of like, okay, well, I can't, I'm not that person and my company doesn't fit this Star Wars fan page. Um, and it'd be like, but what about it do I like? Like, what kind of messages do they do? Is it because they're funny? Am I laughing? Is that why I'm reading this page? Or is it because they have great images that I know I can use down the road for myself? Um, that's how you need to look at social media. It's a constant learning. Um, keep examples, bookmark, uh, things that you love go back and go back to and be like, well, I was like close to that, did I nail it? Um, and most importantly, don't panic when no one likes your post. Uh, you're just starting out uh, and not everything is gonna resonate with people. And again, a lot of the times, it's just people like us that, I don't know about you, but I'm on Facebook and I, I, I have trained myself enough to like people's things. Sometimes I don't even read it, but I know it's my friends and it's really important. So you're not reading the comment, but you're like, I'm a good friend. So like button, like button, and you just scroll through newsfeed. Um, a lot of people don't bother to take the time to do that, right? And that doesn't mean the content doesn't resonate with you. It's just like your time spent is valuable. Uh, and what you're doing is you have to forget that you're preaching to everybody. You just want the right people to read your page. So you have to just presume that you have that huge audience that's hitting the like button from the get-go. And I don't know if you've noticed this with your own social media sites, but when someone finds you, it may take eight months, but all of a sudden, it's like they went back and read your whole Twitter page. And it's just like, like, favorite, 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 retweet. And it's like, I was genius eight months ago, and you just noticed now is how I feel. <laughs> I was like, that was gold. I gave you gold, and you didn't like what I did. And now, apparently, now you like me. But the truth is, like, that's your opportunity to respond. Uh, and it's not enough just to hit the follow button to that person who took the time to go read your Twitter page, like the whole thing. Um, engage them. Find out what they're about uh, and respond authentically. Um, they might, again, have nothing to do with your company. They may not understand tech culture at all. Um, but they might, say, they might say something like, in their tagline, I like yoga. And I don't know, find a way. Like there's a Star Wars yoga chart, right? So like, if Star Wars is your thing and the only thing you know about yoga is there's this chart, I'd be like, have you seen this? LOLs, whatever, hashtag, and create a relationship with that person who just took the time to follow you. Um, so again, that's the listen part, which brings me into the next section, if I can turn it. There we go, okay. So listening is like the most important thing you can do as a community manager. So like, as I tell anyone I train, so Julie over there, I need them to put her on the spot, embarrassing. Um, what I tell her is like, it's so hard to explain to a boss who doesn't know um, social media or how to measure it. So when someone's like, how do you do a scorecard for a community manager? It's very difficult because what I'm gonna tell them they should be doing is spend four hours on Reddit. So, uh, and four hours on Reddit, which has nothing to do about talking about the company, right? So what I would recommend the ideal community manager whose job is just community management, and I get if you're doing it yourself, this doesn't really apply to you yet, but ideally, if you're successful, it will totally apply to you, and you will understand and hire the right person. Um, Reddit is a great, great community for startups, right? Because a lot of those people have been online since the internet came into existence, right? The older groups are, and the young ones are paying attention to it. They have a bookmark. It's their homepage. They start their day there. They end their day there. It's all all day interaction with other people that the introverts like me enjoy, because we don't have to actually talk to you face to face but we're having a really great connection. And <laughs> it meant something to me, I feel good about it, and I go home. Um, this is where your community management spends all of their time. Uh, what you do is you participate in other people's 
uh, conversations. So I had a friend who was starting a dating website, which is really cool and I can't talk about it yet, so I'll just say generic dating website. Uh, what was really awesome and I told her to do, she's like, how do I launch? How do I do this launch? And I'm like, well, for starters, have you, do you have a Reddit account? And her answer was like, no, what is Reddit? And I'm looking at her because she's nerdy and I didn't understand in a million years why a tech person doesn't even know what Reddit exists. So we did a little bit of a crash course and I explained, and for those of you that don't know, it's just, it's this major community that is, I, is there anyone here? Freeze your hand, I don't want to explain Reddit to anyone. Does anyone not know what Reddit is? Okay, okay. All right, so. Uh, <laughs> All right, <laughs> so Reddit is this really great um, community that kind of started uh, based off of like designs like fark.com and something awful, which is geek communities that just wanted to share links. It's actually what I used to do for my old website before places like Reddit existed. Uh, but it was one person, it was me doing like 12 links a day throughout the day of like cool stuff and then adding my like tagline or like witty retort or pictures of that. Mostly all pictures of that with a really, what I think is witty uh, retort, and then hoping that people like it. Um, the difference is the comment section is actually what keeps these things alive, and they then vote, uh, downvote and upvote um, what they consider to be amazing. So um, some of us have been on Reddit when they don't want to be. I don't know, this person I have, and I have watched things be upvoted, and then I read my comment section, and it's when you go in the fetal position at night uh, because you just basically get destroyed which you eventually get much better at handling and it's hard as a company when you get mentioned there because like the truth is um, a lot of people just say things because it's anonymous comments and they just want to be funny and they don't really care about what it is so it's a, it's a very humbling experience Reddit but it's a huge community that's become so popular that like there's not a news outlet that doesn't check uh, Reddit. Like they get their stories from Reddit probably before they do anywhere else um, and that's kind of cool. So this dating, this, this friend of mine who wanted to create a dating website came to me. She's like, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do for launch. Um, how, do I, how do I do this? Uh, you're a social media person. You know how to do this. How do I do it? Um, and what I told her was, have you been on Reddit? I suggest that you go to the relationship columns and just start reading and commenting as a human being. Like as a person who you also have, like you've created this website. I'm assuming you have a story of why you did this. <laughs> Clearly it was not an easy time for you finding this really handsome German guy that you met. Um, and so she's like, okay, cool. Uh, and she's also a huge foodie. Um, and I was like, definitely go check out like the following subreddit groups to talk about these things and just engage yourself. So I told her eight months, just spend eight months getting to know the people of Reddit and the communities that are important to you. And that's what she did. Um, she is about to launch and she has now in the last two months, which I again instructed her to do, which is going really well, um, started to tell her story and why she created a dating website. Um, she had never met uh, any guy that she liked locally. And uh, it wasn't until she was traveling abroad that she met someone. And it, for her, it was so interesting because it was different and unique and had different cultures. And he's a Western guy and she's Asian. And it was like discovering how to navigate each other's experiences. Uh, and so she created a dating website, is in the process of launching this amazing, website that helps you find uh, and explain different cultures. So it's like the idea that if you have chosen this route and you find someone, it's like, how do you get to know them? It's not just a dating website, it's gonna be more like um, best practices, how to navigate their parents, right? Cause like, you don't understand what their culture is like. And I think it's really cool. And now the Reddit community is so behind this because they're actually giving feedback and have been giving feedback for months. Um, they're going like, you know, you should probably do this and maybe have like, oh, your blog should have, you know, a regular person who's doing, you know, astrology reports. And then, you know, you should also have like um, a, different, a different blogger uh, talking about their own personal dating experiences. Not just success stories, but also nightmare stories because those are funny and people love sharing that. Um, and she's been blown away. Now she tells me that she's like having a hard time working on the site because she's spending like 12 hours a day on Reddit uh, with her friends. And the truth is when she comes to launch, what's gonna happen is she's gonna immediately have that entire community behind her and they're gonna push her page to the top of Reddit. And everybody's gonna hear about this amazing new dating website, which is in fairness pretty questionable, but that's also what's gonna make it work. It's quirky and not everyone's gonna agree to it. And that conversation that's happening on Reddit, it's not all gonna be positive. When it goes front page on Reddit, 
the communities will be happy because they'll feel like they did something, that they, they helped her get to this point. This launch point is not just her job anymore, it's their success story. But <laughs> when she goes live on page, people are going to tear her apart. And that's when the other part of community management comes into, which is moderation. Uh, so it is your duty when people start asking questions about like, oh, this website is just called, uh, one of the questions she said was, uh, and she said this to me, she's like, I'm worried that people are gonna think it's like a, a yellow fever uh, dating website. And I'm like, yes, you are going to get a lot of questions about that. So what she started doing is prepared canned responses to explain that that's not the case. This is where it came from, explain her story. And, uh, and then she's gone back to these canned responses and added her own personality into it, which is gonna be the personality of her website. So you create like the, I need to say this, I need to answer this problem, and then kind of stylize it. Uh, when that launch day happens, she is prepared for at least 65% of those questions. And maybe if I help her out and I have some time, 75% of those questions, and you're gonna get floored with stuff you don't know how to answer. And you just, again, you say, I'm sorry, actually, I was. I don't know how to answer that question yet. I guess ask me again in four months, right? The same as like, oh, why did I not explain to you why it took me eight hours to get back to your tweet? It could be like, I just got off a flight. Really sorry. Normally wouldn't happen. Please forgive me. You know, uh, your, your question is important to me. Um, and that's what you do. It's listening, getting to know the kind of people that might be interested in what you're saying, and then speaking authentically on yourself, which is your brand. Um, if you have any questions about that, go ahead and, and ask. Just feel free to like, put your hand up. Um, but yeah, so <laughs> do your research in advance. So like what I tell her to do exactly, which is like, I'm gonna give you like, based off of my knowledge of Reddit, I know there's a couple of relationship um, subreddit groups. Check those out. But I'm like, don't stop there. Like I'm sure there are subreddit groups I've never heard of. There's probably dating websites and communities and forums all over the internet that just never appealed to me. Uh, I'm sure there's probably like, I hate, match.com website. Like find out what match.com did wrong, right? And then try to make sure you answer a lot of those questions on what, why you're not gonna be match.com. Uh, and I'm like, this is your job. It's just as important as creating the product is getting to know the kind of people you're gonna be dealing with. Yeah, go ahead. Reddit's very specific, so like depending on what your business is, I actually, like for her, I actually thought this would be like a really clever way for her to do her launch. We'll find out. Um, <laughs> so, but I think like there are stronger groups than others, and I think it's about pinpointing the right one. Um, the nice thing is like you should just find it anyways, and then that's part of your brain, uh, your brainstorming process is like, okay, well I wanna focus on this, and this is a stronger community, or, um, you know, uh, there are still live journal pages that are really active, which blow my mind, but that's still a thing. Um, yeah, like that people are still on live journal. I'm like, I remember live journal. It's in university. Uh, it's like when I see Orchid is still happening. I don't know if I just literally pulled out an old school one. Orchid is like this Google. <laughs> do you like that? Thank you. I've been on the internet a long time. Um, <laughs> I occasionally log back into my Orchid account, which I felt really cool at the time because Google created this community and it was like you had to get invited like to be part of it. And so for an elitist, nerd uh, at the time, an internet nerd, I was like, I'm like one of the first non-Google members to have an Orchid account, nailed it, uh, people like me. Uh, so I created it and then like two months later it got run over by Brazil. So like the only people that use this social media um, platform is pretty much the country of my whatever. So occasionally I go check and they've like wrote something on my wall and I'm like, ah, oh, people are still following me, that's wonderful, I don't know who that is. So, uh, but anyways, uh, I'm going on a tangent. Do your research, get to know like any kind of community um, that might be interested in your product. And that's the same thing I recommend, not just communities like Reddit, but the Twitter accounts that uh, might be interested in your story, which I'll get into later about influencers and how to spot them. Um, Ryan, I'm gonna totally need a glass of water. That's cool, thanks. Um, yeah, so again, funny story time I kind of already got into, which is uh, what JP Morgan does wrong. Uh, <laughs> I'm totally get like a cease and desist letter if I'm known for this. But anyways, uh, this was not my doing, but most recently uh, JP Morgan did this uh, Ask JPMC hashtag event. And uh, some of you may have heard about it. That is like asking the empire going, do you guys have any opinions on the Death Star? <laughs> I'm just, we're just throwing it out there like, do you think there's something we could do better? And what happened was they just destroyed 
them. And like some of these things were amazing and I thought was actually pretty good for them because JP Morgan was in news for like a week. But at the same time, the story was like what not to do in social media. And the truth is like, I know that that particular um, Twitter handle was not handled by a content agency. Uh, and a lot of them are. But the problem is it's such a massive company and it's not all in one spot. And I'm totally going to drink all the water. Thanks. Uh, mm -mm. So what they did is they did the Ask JBMC, very funny, very witty, also a very disappointing tweet that they had to deal with. The funny story about this is they didn't know it was happening. I'm the one who found it, so, and I was long since off the JP Morgan uh, team, and what <laughs> happened was I, my friend was like, did like a retweet of something, and I saw the Ask JPMC thing, and I'm like, oh, it's JP Morgan, what are they up to? Click it find out that it's already, uh, I think it was fourth uh, and trending on Twitter at the time and it had only been up for like an hour. And so I email uh, my old boss that was there and I'm like, so hey, what's, what's happening with this whole ass JPMC thing? <laughs> Hashtag mistake. <laughs> um, so <laughs> anyways, and they were like, what, what are you talking about? What hap what's happening on Twitter? And I'm like, okay, like it's, I'm almost embarrassed it took me an hour to find it and I don't work with you anymore um, because I like to consider I know what's hashtagging like, or tw uh, tweeting at the time. But no, seriously, uh, she didn't know. So then I told her, she then forwarded my email on to everybody else in the company and then I started, I got contacted by some very, very big person at JPMC that was like, thank you, uh, can you do an analytics report to explain like the fallout and what do you recommend we do for the next like week? So like, they're basically like, please tell us what to do. We've made a terrible mistake. And I'm like, well, first of all, you have to let this one die out. There is nothing something like JP Morgan can do. Like any, any apology, they don't, they're not someone who can be funny. And even if they handled it in a funny way, it just would have made the fire bigger. And what you have to do is just ride it out. That is probably not the same advice I would give a tech startup company. I would tell you to be very honest and apologize and, uh, and then again your ask JPMC or ask your company probably wouldn't happen but the truth is like you're gonna make mistakes and there's different ways to handle it and the true response is always the human response like what would you personally do if you upset someone or uh, offended someone you would apologize and you do it quick and you don't take two days to respond you do it like as soon as you realize you made the mistake and one of the biggest things that I always tell companies to do is when <laughs> you do a post on Facebook and you mess up Never hide it, sorry, and you never delete it. You can hide it off the main page, right? So I don't believe in covering your tracks. I believe you can go like, I don't want this on my front page, it's not important, but you don't delete it. Um, and that's, <laughs> the, maybe the exceptions to that is in extreme cases where maybe someone got a hold of your account, it's offensive, right? But as far as like a typo, right? <laughs> or you got like the date wrong or something along those lines, um, just hide it, because uh, that's, that's being honest, right? Um, and yeah, no one's really going to judge you because you had a typo, right? Um, so y you should get in the habit of just being like, it's okay to make mistakes. Uh, I'm a human. My company is uh, going to create errors. It's going to happen and just write it out. Um, but yeah, JP Morgan messed up and they wrote it out and they were in the news for like a good solid two weeks on it. And then I explained to them, you're not only going to be in the New York Times about this, you're going to be an example of what not to do for social media experts for years, <laughs> and I'm like, so uh, you signed up for it, and I'm like, when that happens and you have anyone from this company, a lot of people ask me personally, like, I work in social media, what if they remember this, how is this gonna affect my job? And I'm like, you explain it like I do. You know, you say, we make mistakes, clearly we were not aligned on that day, we probably should have done, made sure that was cool, everyone knew in the company that was happening. But the truth is, the company didn't even know it was happening, which means whoever was in charge of that Twitter page didn't even let anyone in any department of this giant company that they were doing an Ask JPMC, which again, confuses me, because who is responding to it? Like what, like I don't know everything in JP Morgan Chase. Are you telling me if there's investment questions and this was actually gonna be a real Ask JPMC, they had someone on, on the line to be able to respond to that? I don't think so. Did they have a credit card expert ready to do that? No. So, Maybe think things through when you come down with a, hey, I'm bored today. Let's just see if you guys have any questions. Um, so yeah, moving on. If I can hit the button again. Buttons are so hard. Okay. 
influencers. Um, this is probably where, uh, if you haven't started your company yet or you haven't really, um, you have an idea and you don't really know um, anything about how to find someone to help amplify your voice. Uh, basically, what I want to explain to you is there's so many different types of influencers. Um, there are so many <laughs> different explanations for types of influencers that the PDF that if you give me your email address afterwards has like a list of 15. And they're all completely different. And they all want very different things from you. Mm. Also, those dogs are pretty cute. So, hooray. <coughs> Excuse me, I am recovering from a cold. So anyways, uh, the networker uh, is your social butterfly, which is, um, again, someone who is big on thinking that they know everybody. Uh, so they're someone who are going to be probably your biggest champions. They, if they like to know people, they're going to want to talk about you at some point. But in order to get an influencer like the networker to pay attention to you, and like any influencer to pay attention to you, you have to give them something back. Um, and this is about part of the listening skills I was talking about earlier, which is like as a social media community manager, um, you know these people, you know what they want, right? You know what makes them tick. You know that on their Twitter page on Mondays, they're big into posting Mashable articles, right? You might even know that they start doing that around 10 a.m. and you want to be the person who last night at like 12 p.m. was like, I found the perfect art article for you. This is going to be killer. And you send it directly to them. Like it's not you with the intent to post it on your own page. It's you going like, I know you. You love this. I found this this morning. Nailed it. Um, and send it to them. And that's how you develop a relationship. And again, it's not like, I sent them a link. We're, we're in business. This person's for sure going to talk about me. This could take months. The same thing as like that dating website I talked about that is it's relationships. Um, I think the biggest mistake people make about uh, community management is that it's any different than being a really good people person uh, in real life. It's like, what would you do for your friends? How would you help your buddy? If you're trying to date someone, you are going way out of your way, probably. Well, unless you're <laughs> dating is really easy for you and you can just be a jerk, which is great. Like, I'm glad that works for you. But for the most part, it involves a lot of wooing and a lot of like, yeah, I'll watch this. Um, ridiculous movie that you forced me to watch, which is usually me being like, so have you guys seen Pootie Tang? Can we watch Pootie Tang together and then quote it for like a solid hour? And it's usually that like a guy who wants something from me is for sure going to watch Pootie Tang. And he will watch it probably like six times in a row if I ask him to. Uh, and that's what you have to do for any influencer. So opinion leader, as you, I don't have to explain it, it's pretty straightforward. Um, thought leaders, uh, that's often sometimes, as far as I'm concerned, the same as a reporter. So. Um, an expert in a field, loves to share their ideas, probably doesn't do a lot of retweeting, um, like just posting articles. It's probably his articles, right? So, and he might have a huge follower base because he's a genius and he says all the right things at all the right time and you know to pay attention to him. There's a way to get that guy's attention, which is again telling him he's a genius uh, and not just retweeting him, right? Uh, and at the same time offer something. and. You might do a lot of posting that guy on your Facebook page and your Twitter page and your Google Plus page. And you, know, you might even email him a, you know, like, you were pretty genius today, email. And again, don't just say that. Give examples. Show them that you actually read his blog post. And actually read his blog post, just FYI. Don't like, do the quick glance over, think that you have to do this for your business. It's about being authentic. If you care about your company taking off, you're going to care about the guy who can help you get there. And the guy who helps you get there is not just the investor and your buddy, right? Um, so that's, <laughs> it seems common sense, but I think what happens when you're doing a tech startup or any kind of venture is that you have a lot on your plate and you don't know where to um, kind of push your important time. This is super important if you want to take off. Um, so <clears throat> again, the share is the reporter. These are the kind of people that when you're ready to launch and you're ready to go, they're your guy um, or girl. So, <clears throat> I'm so sick, I'm so sorry. Um, basically, this is the same approach. It's again, being a real person, but it's uh, communicating, reposting, um, not just, enough, it's not enough just to like something. I think that's the thing I wanna make really clear, and um, I know I, I prompted you to remind me, but I'm gonna jump into it, because um, it's definitely not in my really creative PowerPoint presentation, which is epic. Um, you need to, care enough to like more, like just not just like a person's page, right? Like I do it all the time, I get guilty, I told you, Facebook scroll, like, 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 like. But I do at night when I have time, I go back and read the things that I wrote. 
my friends always laugh at me because I'll like something and then eight hours later I'll respond. And they're like, well, what'd you do? I'm like, well, I'm, I'm a pretty busy person. They can, they, they can laugh at it. So. But the truth is like, that's, that's being a real responder and that means that you care. And I'm gonna pay attention to that person and if you care about your tech company and your friend's tech company, Geekdom is a great example. There's a lot of people here doing great things and you got to know them and you talk uh, to them when you're getting coffee. Um, what you wanna do is not just like their page, go comment, maybe repost some of their stuff. Engage, like constantly do that. And what you're doing is helping their amplification. So when you comment on something, your friends see it, right? If your friend comments, their friends see it. And it's the best and cheapest way to do advertising on Facebook, right? Um, you can even have like a pact with your other startup buddy friend that you're gonna comment on it. And just because you're the CEO does not mean you can't comment as a person on your own page. You can amplify it again to your friends. And if they're your friends, they're not gonna delete you on Facebook if you keep spamming their news feed about you. Um, well, maybe they will, but they're not really your friends. So that's what I recommend that people do. And when I go to the Geekdom page, and even right now the Hero X one, uh, we're not doing enough. Uh, I definitely have to pull in my team and give them the explanation of what they need to do for us, which is like every time we post something, like let's start conversation, you know? Um, usually when you post something on Facebook, I recommend doing a CTA. So to call to action, it's not enough just for a picture, uh, do a link. Ask a question. So ask questions that matter. Don't just be like, I don't, poor JP Morgan. Uh, they, they will do like, uh, sometimes just for the sake of having a post up for a day, which I super don't like. Um, I think you should post every day, but I think that it's quantity over, sorry, quality over quantity. And at the same time, like, ask the right questions. Don't be like, vanilla ice cream or chocolate? It's like, what does that, what, what, why? That's not a conversation. Um, but you could use examples, like, um, if you're a tech startup, you can be like, I wanna, uh, we're learning how to deal and talk about social media for ourselves. Um, what do you guys think about the JP Morgan thing? Like, what was the worst mistake out of all those mistakes? And then, like, engage a conversation and have the comment section be that topic. Think of the best um, personal friend status pages that were like, I said something the other day about gluten waffles, right? And I was, it was funny, I guess, a little bit, but I wasn't the only person who thought that gluten waffles were terrible, right? Gluten free, sorry. Thank you. Just, it's because I haven't had any in so long that I, my brain. Uh, so anyways, I thought they were really terrible, the gluten-free waffles, and I didn't really know how to say it politely, so I posted it on Facebook to vent a little bit. Um, and what happened was a lot of conversation happened in that post. And the last time I was visiting here, um, I met this amazing guy on my way to do the San Antonio MX Challenge uh, project launch. Um, and basically, this guy, it was so cool, he was like 88 years old. He was uh, born and raised in San Antonio. His whole, like, whole life was here. He had two really incredible kids. One that was living in Boston, it's a doctor, and the other one um, worked in the military, is now retired. And this guy was so amazing. I learned so much about him, and I, I had Facebook pictures of him up, and we were doing it because it was Wi-Fi on the plane. And so I would post pictures of us having this really cool hangout, and it'd be me going like, this guy's amazing. Uh, we're now going through the Sky Mall catalog together and we were judged, he's 80, 88 years old, he's wearing uh, the rings that he had from his marriage and he had, I think it was like 65 years of marriage, this guy was intense. I was bawling pretty much the whole time we were talking because he was just so wonderful, but he was also funny. So people all of a sudden were paying a lot of attention to my Facebook page because it would be me posting a picture and then I, I didn't just keep posting pictures and like explaining a different status, I kept the conversation entirely in the comments, right? So people had to keep refreshing, go back and read. So it was like a Reddit page, but in the comment section of Facebook. Um, and it was me being like, just heard another amazing Lewis story. Here it is. And people were just like, who is this guy? And when do I get to meet him? So I invited him to Toronto, uh, which I'm gonna meet him down here probably in the next week or two. But what was so cool about him is we went through the Sky Mall catalog together and he was like, his favorite thing was the I don't know if you've ever looked in it, but it's like there's skeleton lawn gnomes. And he was just like, sign me up. And I'm like, yeah, they are pretty cool. So I have him holding like the Sky Mall catalog and he's making a face and I'm kind of like, right? Like pretty awesome. And there was like a sexy lady lamp thing. So anyways, for Christmas, I then sent him the skeletal lawn gnomes, which he really appreciated. Um, but again, like people still ask me, like, how's Lewis doing? You're back in San Antonio, you're gonna go see him, right? 
and like that's being authentic. And I would have loved to have done that from a brand perspective, like Hero X, because we were there and we talked about it. And he was so passionately interested in what um, Geekton was doing, because to him, he's the example of why they're having this project, right? Like two incredibly smart sons who don't live in San Antonio, like went, like just took off. Um, and he was coming back to San Antonio to spend Christmas away from his family because his wife died and he wanted to spend it like in their home to, like, despite not having family with them. So he was very passionately involved and I think that's, that was the story I was telling in between the comment section and that was engaging. And if you can do that from a company perspective, then you should do it. Uh, obviously you're gonna have to clear it with the person that you had that wonderful plain conversation with before you post it on a, a public scale, but those are the kind of things that resonate with people. That's you being real. Um, and that's what I write back and you try to always do. Um, so anyways, uh, yeah, moving on, slightly sidetracked. Operation brand hipster training. Yes. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks for that. Yeah. Oh, wonderful. Uh, talking about examples of what not to do. Pick hashtags that potentially don't offend people. Yeah. Or mock a disorder. Um, so, anyways, <laughs> Operation Brand Hipster Training. Again, uh, what's common sense for kids today that are growing up with Instagram uh, existing to begin with and doing probably very questionable things with, uh, there's a way to turn this uh, into something great for your company. Now, one of the things I like to say is like, you don't need to be on every platform. Like I truly believe that not every company belongs on Instagram, so this might not even matter to you, but at the same time, it doesn't mean you shouldn't have an Instagram account. And the kind of things that you can do for your Instagram account might not be on your public page, but what it is is like, you guys having a great time at Geekdom, right? It's like the, the story of how you guys came to create your startup and where you're gonna wind up being. So if you want to be in a company like FreshBooks, who I think does social media very well, um, <laughs> what they do is you go to their page, just how awesome their company is. Like that's, that's what it is. It has nothing to do with their product. It has to do with their team, right? Uh, and again, what they do really well is the, the bank teller story that I was saying. It's like what, <laughs> what FreshBooks does is they make their superstars their support staff. The most important people in that company are the ones you call when that software isn't working. You know, you're talking to Ryan. Ryan might have like a Pokemon collection and he really is into Skittles. Um, and you would know that. And the truth is like, that's also why you're not gonna uh, kind of talk crap to Ryan on the phone, even though you're really frustrated that the software doesn't work, right? So it's a really smart business move to have a face to your company. Um, people are more inclined to be nice to you when they realize you're a real person, right? So, and the truth is one of the things that FreshBook also does that's amazing is that they empower their support staff to make the executive decision to go, it's so-and-so's birthday, we're gonna send them a cake. There is no clearance, there is no like, I'm gonna ask the CEO about it, I'm gonna ask my boss. They just do it and they bill it. Now obviously you can't send a car. I would be totally over about it. I'd be like, you get a car, you get a car, you get a car, <laughs> everybody gets cars today. It's on FreshBooks. <laughs> hashtag mistake, um, hashtag fired, um, never working again. Um, so anyways, that's what I recommend and it, that's, that's what I would do for a social media manager. It's like empower them, but more importantly, be cool. And your story and your Instagram, if it's not about your product, is about who you are, right? And the truth is like if you're really into something, you're, you're gonna look it up and nothing is cooler than seeing like people creating and having fun together and that's like, having a drink. Uh, here I was giving Julie a lot of crap and I have given Ryan a lot of crap and I'm like, this is like a really cool office. You have like games I grew up playing on doors. And there was like Mist and I pretty much lost my mind when I saw Mist because that game destroyed me. It's also the first game that required uh, you to get the book too and I was very upset about it and I remember not buying the book for like a really long time and then just staying like locked in a room for like a solid four hours. So then she was like, you are not smart enough to get out of this room without looking up what you have to do. Uh, I'm really not. So anyways, that's something you can use and I want people to understand and think as if everything is a moment you could photograph. And that's something that is really easy to do and for me. I know that like I'm the person who walks into a restaurant if, or I'm ready to four square login. But that's me and I've been doing this a really long time. And before I even sat down, I'm like, well, 
I hope there's something I can photograph in here and post my personal Instagram page, which is, I realize, really lame, probably, what you guys are thinking. But the truth is, like, I, I also understand that it's for my personal brand, right, too. Like, so when I'm coming to talk to you about it, I can speak authentically that I understand what Instagram is, right? That I understand how it's important, not just for, um, if I want to get hired for a job in social media, but if I want to explain to you that it's kind of cool to know the person a little bit better uh, when they're not wearing the suit, right? Um, so anyways, again, when in doubt, throw a Hudson filter on it. Um, okay, same thing. It's just you have to think as if you have Twitter and Instagram goggles on at all time. So again, Geekdom's really easy, and I realize that not every office place is going to be like this place, and that's, that's okay. But there's different things you do. You go to a coffee shop. You know, that's where you're having your meeting today. You're going to maybe create your own hashtag for, like, when you're doing your uh, training sessions. So you could have like, you know, headquarters hashtag related to what it is you're doing. And so every time you check into this coffee shop, or every time you come into work, that's what you're using. Um, and that's how people can follow you what you're doing. Um, know the events we're talking about, which is, again, unrelated to your business. I know there's kind of a big event happening on February 2nd. You may have heard of it. It's called the Super Bowl. Um, <laughs> also, the Seahawks are involved. so. Uh, very happy person, and I'm flying back just to go watch the game. I'm sorry, it hasn't come up. I had to say it. Um, so go Hawks. Anyways, uh, that's something that you should be on Twitter for. I get that like it's a Sunday and you want to spend it with your family. You have a reason to get get involved. Uh, it's a huge. <laughs> it's a hashtag that people are going to be following, refreshing it. If you have something funny to say about it, you have a personal opinion, right? That stuff's going to be seen. It's also, again, the whole idea that you're not just a company, you're a person, right? It could be even as simple as um, just an idea. Leading up to the Super Bowl, you have people who have very different opinions about who should win, which you shouldn't because it's the Seahawks. Um, so, but if you, if you did, <laughs> um, that's a situation where maybe you have hilarious um, jersey day, everyone wore their jersey, or uh, everyone make fun of that guy for wearing the Broncos jersey, which is what I would do. Um, so I put him in a corner in a room, put a hat on him, make him face the wall, right? No one's talking to this guy today because he's been banned. Like that's the kind of stuff you can do, like create a fun post um, that show your brand and have nothing to do with your product but everything to do with why they choose your product over someone else. Um, so again, with FreshBooks, the reason why I think they're going to be a huge success is because they have a face. They're not just a software. I'm sure that there'll be tons of competing software for FreshBooks before we know it, but will they be as cool? Will they send you a cake on your birthday? Will they Instagram it, right? Will you have something that's retweetable from your company? And what they do for other companies by sending that cake is going, I just gave you your content for today, right? So they didn't just take a picture, send you or whatever, they send you a cake or whatever. That person then goes, okay, for my company, I want to thank FreshBooks. So they Instagram the cake that just arrived, tag it, loop them back in. FreshBooks gets other content to repost on their page, right? And success stories. Um, and again, probably a little to do with your product. Um, putting it into here. Uh, yeah, know the people engaged on the events. Uh, so again, like for me, there's no way I'm not following the Seahawks on uh, pretty much everything. I have like I think I have like four. I follow fan sites on Instagram for the Seahawks and on Twitter. Like I follow every person I'm supposed to listen to with an opinion. But I also follow the bad guys. And yes, I just referred to you because it's bad guys, which I don't actually think. But the truth is, like, I care and I pay attention and I'm going to engage with them, right? I also will know by following those accounts what hashtags are trending right now because for sure the community manager for the Seahawks is using the game tag properly, right? It's not, you don't have to guess. It's there. You know what's to do. Uh, and then you just follow them and continue to steal their ideas, essentially. Um, don't talk for the sake of talking. Something I feel I do a lot of, but on social... I don't. Um, say things that matter, say things that are important, say things that are funny, and think about it, but make sure you actually post it. I think people hesitate and second guess having an opinion, and you don't do that. Sometimes your post is going to be stupid. Um, my best friend in the entire world and I are like super introverts, which always confuses people because people are like, oh, you're really good in like, group settings, and you can talk to someone. And I'm like, yeah, and then I go home and I don't talk to anyone for like four days in my little cave, and it's wonderful. And then I come back out to the world and I see everybody. But my best friend and I um, are identical um, personalities. So she will come over. We will sit on the couch 
and we will not say a single word to each other, and we have our laptops and our phone, and all we do is tweet to each other about a topic, whatever we were doing, um, and we'll talk on instant messenger and everything else. So we, for Christmas, live tweeted Home Alone movies, um, which was our opinions, and you're, feel free to go back and check it. It was pretty funny. Um, but basically, people got really involved. So we created the hashtag regarding Home Alone movies because everyone was bored. It was, you know, your holiday. Um, and what happened is all of our friends started going, I drop whatever you're doing tonight. You need to pay attention to Christy and Kat. They are currently watching Home Alone, drinking wine, and being ridiculous online. And that is what we were. Um, before I knew it, we had people I've never heard of like asking me questions. And we, I use it as material. You ask me a funny thing, like we were using her. She's a comedy writer. I'm not fun as funny as her. She's genius. Um, so I try to play off their strikes. But that went on for hours. Like they actually, we had people upset because Kat drank too much wine. Um, by the end of Home Alone 2, and she wanted to stop. And I was like, you can't stop now. <laughs> we have to finish the movie. <laughs> so I'm like slapping her face. We had pictures post me trying to wake Kat up. <laughs> and um, the point was, people started being like, Kat, rally. Like, rally, man. Like, you've committed to live tweeting Home Alone. This is important work. <laughs> and so <laughs> our very important Home Alone work was uh, finished, and then she hated me the next day, which is fine. Uh, friend, friendship, hashtag friendship. Uh, but anyways, the point is, like, her job, as I said, like, she's writing comedy, she wants to work in TV. Uh, she's the actual senior editor for entertainment, like Yahoo Entertainment. Um, she gets interviewed all the time to talk about as an expert on media, um, an expert on, uh, I guess, television. She's the kind of person that when I'm, this is literally uh, the other thing that happens all the time, I'm like, Who's that guy that does that thing with the hair? And she somehow knows, which is amazing. But like, she's like a walking encyclopedia of pop culture. And that's her thing. Um, so when she started doing this live tweet, this was mentioned on radio talk, like radio talk shows that she had to do interviews for. They were like, so your friend Christy, you guys like seriously just sat on the couch. She's like, just for the record, we didn't say a single word to each other the entire time. We just laughed. Like, it was just, if you could picture the couch where just two girls are <laughs> laughing hysterically, thinking they're pretty funny, right? Doing this for four hours. Um, and I get, I get you can't do that from a company perspective, but if you can think like that and know that that's something that would be, like, endearing or, uh, you know, might resonate with you. And again, like, event tweeting is a really good example of that. So, for example, this time period, you could be writing stuff and live tweeting and being really funny or making fun of me, which is really easy to do. So I recommend that you do that. If it's in the nature for your, your own business, go right ahead. But yeah, so uh, quality or quantity. And I don't know if you can see this. So again, uh, I will send you the PDF version of this. But I created this uh, social media checklist. And this is very overwhelming. And I fully expect that people probably won't be able to do the vast majority of this. But it's a really good thing to have saved to your desktop for just making sure you've done the best you could for your company today. Um, so for Facebook, what I recommend is that you try at least, and this is really ambitious, so at least every, like in a week, try to find and like five new pages. Um, and by five new pages, for Geekdom, you could just start by doing all the companies here that have one. Like follow them, like them, start paying attention to what they're doing, because you want to be a great listener to your friends and the people that are in the same boat as you. I recommend that you comment uh, if, uh, at least two pages per day. So engage in other people's content, aim for two posts a day. Like, this is, <laughs> this is something you can like literally just kind of like, yeah, nailed it, done, done social media for today. Um, for your posts, always include a call to action. So as I said, like a link, a question, ideally all three, like a, a picture, a question, um, a CTA. But again, like sometimes you just say cool things that are not required for this, but as many times as you possibly can do that. Add the hashtags that are appropriate to your posts and trending topics. So for example, um, when you create a content calendar, I always explain you should do it loose, um, which is like never go, I'm 100% posting this. Because by the time you do it, it's probably not even fresh. No one wants to pay attention to it anymore. But you know that the Super Bowl is coming up. I'm really sorry I keep bringing it up. It's can't stop. I'm just really excited. Um, so anyways, you know it's coming up. So plan posts around it, right? Be like, if you know it's coming up every year, you can be like, well, I know that internally our company is going to have, you know, we're going to have Super Bowl Day and for everyone Jersey Day. And we know that we're going to do a post on this. And we're going to make fun of Phil on Friday, like guaranteed, because Phil's a jerk. 
So everyone know that we're going to put this in the calendar. We don't like any of his choices in life, specifically his teams. So that's going to be make fun of Phil Day and done. Um, so that's the kind of stuff you can plan around. Those are the things you can uh, build a call to action in advance. Um, and you know what the hashtags are going to be for the Super Bowl in advance. Uh, if commercials can do it and know in advance what to do it, you can do it. Um, Twitter, same thing kind of thing. So I, I aim for new, three new tweets a day. Uh, I recommend that one is kind of business related, one is fun and social, um, and some are just kind of promotional for your company. But your vast majority of time on Twitter should be responding, um, getting to know people, uh, even the ones that aren't directly commenting to you, like just out there being like, hey, I like your content. Hey, I like your site, da 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 da. Retweet them. Uh, I recommend minimum two retweets a day when you're starting out. Uh, follow at least 10 new people a day. And one of the best ways to find followers is an example for me. So when HeroX is starting out, and it still is very much starting out, uh, I was like, okay, we're, like, we're related to XPRIZE. Who's following XPRIZE? And who is XPRIZE following, right? So first thing I did was I went to XPRIZE and I looked at their follower list and I looked at the important ones. And I scrolled through the ones with huge follower bases and I just started paying attention to them to you. And I created lists and I was like, these people I want to pay attention to, if XPRIZE wants to pay attention to them, I want to know who they are. Sorry, I thought I had a hand. Anyways, um, what I recommend also is like kind of a pro tip. Uh, add comments to your retweets. It's not enough just to retweet it. You want your name to be branded on it too. So what you can do, uh, you can always alter their message. If someone's putting a link in a funny comment, you can sometimes get rid of their funny comment if necessary. Try to keep it um, and just keep the link. Do like the ROT in front of it and add your own commentary. And what you do is you're promoting your friend or your influencer that could help you out, but you're also doing something for you and your brand, right? And then every time, maybe the people who don't know that little trick just start retweeting what you wrote, right? Instead of what you just retweeted. So it is, it's going to continue to amplify and help you guys out. Uh, da -da -da, LinkedIn. Uh, LinkedIn's actually a huger community with uh, people our age group right now and, and older, and it's going to continue to grow that way. Um, I even think the focus is going to be less on Facebook and more on LinkedIn, if you ask me. Um, super important to get in there. Uh, I recommend you try to connect with three to five people a week. Follow three new companies. Uh, request one or two recommendations a week, which is really ambitious. Uh, so maybe just try to do one every like three weeks, which is like, Hey buddy, like thanks for doing that um, graphic design artwork for us. Would it be cool if you would just write, like take two seconds to write us something? We'll write something on your LinkedIn page that your work was amazing, right? And that's like, when people come to check out your company, they can see uh, this person like this person thought you were amazing, and then you, you can return the favor. <coughs> uh, repost all the blog posts on newsfeed. So the kind of stuff that you're doing on Facebook for the most part is usually going to be the same kind of content you want on your Google page and your LinkedIn page. I won't bother to reread all this stuff to you if you don't want me to. But um, interesting fact about Pinterest, it's actually one of the best ways to drive site traffic. So um, huge following base. And again, it's a different community. Maybe your company doesn't fit on it. But what I recommend is you can create a page, do inspiration boards, things that help you out. Um, maybe it's about your product. Maybe it's about things that inspired you. Um, but try to do it to link it to your blog. So it's a post. And what's going to happen is when that they'll follow through. People on Pinterest follow through almost every time, right? So they see something they like, they click all the way to the source. Kind of cool. Um, at least it's cool for now. I recommend that you uh, try to keep creating new pin boards. Um, I allocate like at least like 15 minutes a day to Pinterest. I try not to go into Pinterest hole, which is very easy to girls to do, which is like all of a sudden you're like, I didn't know you could curl your hair like that. And now I'm watching curling hair videos for hours, and then I get distracted by cat videos, and it's a really bad cycle. But um, anyways, yeah, encourage followers to pin on your boards. Uh, sometimes I like to do like a gift. I'll do like a blog post involving our, our inspiration board on Pinterest, right? So you can drive traffic both ways. Um, doo -doo -doo, Instagram, at least one photo per day. Like, and I get that not every place is like geekdom is really exciting, but sometimes it could just be a sunset or you know, maybe it's the, what you use for your blog post, the actual image, and you just mention, hey guys, go check out the blog today. Like you can try something. And if you really don't have anything good of quality, then maybe don't post. But for the most part, like aim to have something. Um, you <laughs> use appropriate hashtags, still important. I try to follow new people every day on um, Instagram. Uh, and it's really easy to do that. You just follow the hashtag and see who's interested in the same things that you're interested in. 
So it was a Super Bowl. It's very easy to find fans. On game day, I also Friday, because it's called Blue Friday, which means I'm in one of my jerseys. Uh, and what happens is I post my photo, and then I hit the hashtag, and then I pretty much go like, 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 like to all Seahawks fans. And what happens, they go back to my page, and they're like, we also like you. Thank you. Like, like. And so like, that's my kind of way of finding friends. Uh, people who also understand that the Seahawks are the best thing ever. Um, and yeah, so I aim to like my friends' pictures, at least 20 or 30 of them a day. Um, when I can, I comment. I like to do at least five comments a day, if it's from a business standpoint, showing that you're constantly engaged and paying attention. Try not to do the same people all the time. Uh, Foursquare, I really recommend, and it's hard, but you have to get in the practices. When you're showing up to work, check in. Like, wherever you are, like you can say hashtag headquarters or like in this case, uh, case I have, um, we're doing the you know, hashtag MX challenge. We're doing a meeting on this, blah, blah, blah. So like wherever I'm going right now, I'm kind of following my footsteps. This doesn't mean you have to do it on your Saturdays and Sundays or check into your home and let people know where you live, right? But it could be like the coffee shop. And the thing is, don't just stop there. Go, uh, <laughs> does this coffee shop have a Twitter page, right? Does this food truck have a Twitter page? And they do. So like yesterday, I actually made fun of someone's uh, Twitter handle because it was terrible on uh, one of the food trucks, and I will not call them out by name, but uh, we did recommend that they change it, and they agreed that they'll probably go ahead and rebrand it because it was very confusing because it left off the O. So you don't know if it's a typo, right? You hesitate. Um, you're like, because it's not a correct word, right? So you're just go like, I don't know. Um, so that's the kind of thing. And like, maybe your meeting was so good and you were really into fish tacos yesterday because they were full of gluten, which is fact. It was amazing. And I had a conversation <laughs> with their, their owner and back and forth on Twitter. That's what you should try to aim for. Like that's taking it the whole way through from Foursquare, I checked in, blah, 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 and then a conversation. You could say like these tacos are amazing. That's it. Um, anyways, uh, create a check-in for your office, for sure. Have your employees constantly doing that when they start, um, what they do after when they go home. It's up to them. Uh, add two or three tips. Reviews for local establishments per week is what I recommend. Oh, other thing is, uh, if you do any group outings with your team, 100% Foursquare check-in, that's your opportunity to Instagram it. Like, you have to think of all these. Uh, someone's birthday, a cake arrives. You know before anyone touches that cake. And it can be really annoying. You can literally, people are just starving, and you can like take the chair out, stand on the chair, do this with your camera like this, and keep taking it, and be like, no guys, nope, sorry. Really nail it. Like take it to a new level, and that's what I would expect you to do from a company standpoint. Um, but then it's also like have that conversation about how good the cake was, not on Instagram, like on Instant Messenger. Do it on Twitter, right? Or make fun of the person you can't eat gluten on Twitter. Um, so yeah, blogger outreach, one post a day. I'll just kind of pass through that. Uh, Google Plus, add five new people in your circle. And again, Reddit is more of a community not to talk about yourself, but to talk about other people. So in the event you finally have something to say. They care. And let's see. Oh. Oh, hold on. Oh, damn it. One of my best slides is not going to show up. It's a Futurama quote, you guys. But uh, anyways, if you guys have any questions whatsoever, now would be the time. It's a lot of things I didn't cover. Well, I just, I, I'm going to say a couple things. OK. Yeah, go for it. For Lorenzo's. Yeah, go for it. I don't know. There's no so yeah, questions, obviously, ask her. We have till two, um, and uh, I also want to let you guys know that we have ten books um, titled Like Anonymous for the first ten people who signed up. So see Ryan in the back for those. Questions. Don't pummel him because he knows ten. That's a really good book because it talks about influence. Okay, so like how to spot them, how to get people in engagement. So I recommend it. Yeah. 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 So anyway, ask ask questions. Just want to throw that out there. Cool. Yes. Oh yeah. Minimally, but yes. I again, it's a the face to what you're doing, right? And again, what I think FreshBooks does is like I know who Ryan is and what he looks like, and he, we just had a phone conversation, and maybe because I'm a trained social media person, so I had that call, I had the call, we had a conversation, I immediately go to Twitter and I think FreshBooks, right? 
like without hesitation. If I had a really good encounter, I'm the person, I'm, I'm like your ideal user for a brand, right? Because I know immediately I want to thank you for that experience. But um, nothing, as you know, uh, the stories like people like to tell are usually the negative ones, right? Um, so what you want to do is always be creating good stories because even though the negative story might go to thousands of people, the good one's going to go to five people who know that they definitely want to use your product. So, um, yeah, and as far as putting a personal spin on it, like, uh, to use examples, so when I, uh, Julie got hired, um, we immediately did like a post to say like, we just brought a new community manager, everybody welcome, you know, Julie, like direct picture, direct name, like have her out there. Like that's what you should do. Um, it's a personal side, you don't overwhelm Twitter. Like I really recommend, again, it's the um, quality over quantity, but when you have something to say, you say it. And um, the only exception to you really blasting on Twitter is when there's an event. So like perhaps you're hosting a launch party or something, right? Or you're having like master series. Like that's when it's acceptable to probably do like 15, 20 tweets in like, I don't know, a four hour period of time, right? But otherwise don't, don't overwhelm people. It takes a really long time to get someone to follow you and like about two seconds to get deleted. Um, same thing with Facebook. I recommend only quality posts. You don't, po you should not post unless there's something really amazing happening all day long. It's like, find the right time, 9 a.m. Find out when your, your friends and the people that are interested in your industry are posting. Uh, 9 a.m. is usually a really good time. Uh, 8 a.m. is even better sometimes because no one else has actually woken up and posted, so maybe it's at the top of the news feed and people just immediately going to their phone. But every environment's different, right? Uh, Toronto, <laughs> different user base, right? We get up early, whereas in Vancouver, People, I, I'm pretty sure no one works in Vancouver. I'm still mystified that people have jobs in Vancouver because I go there and I go for coffee and it's like a ghost town. And then I go on the train, I'm like, do people work here? When do people wake up in Vancouver? And I'm thinking I just haven't figured it out and they might go to work around 4 p.m. But like, I, I actually don't know what I would post in Vancouver. Um, and that's what I'm saying, like, get to know your city. Find out when like, other people are tweeting on um, San Antonio time, right? And that's when you start wanting to focus on your posts. Anyone else? Yes, in the back. <coughs> if you're starting like a Kickstarter, I, I mean, obviously you have all these different social media, but if you're doing something very specific for Kickstarter, which uh, social media platforms do you think would be the most effective? Uh, Kickstarter, I would again, I would do Twitter because I think more people are checking it on the regular. Whereas Facebook, like I said, is something I neglect a lot and I am someone who's very tuned in. Uh, I'll do the like, 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 and then go back and read it. I think Twitter is something people are constantly refreshing every day. Um, it also allows you uh, to say a lot more and a lot less, a lot more often, right? So, um, yeah, I, I definitely think Twitter's the best. I would also say, like, work in your Instagram account. You can tie it to your corporate one. You can do two at once, like two at a time. Yeah. I have two questions. Yes. Can you share the checklist with us? I actually, I should post it. I'll post it on HeroX um, for sure. I'll do that uh, after this. Okay. I'll put it up there. But I will gladly send it to you personally. Um, I find it really good. It's ambitious. Um, ideally, if you hired a community manager, that's what you know they're going to be doing in the day. Like, do you know what I'm saying? But like, if you're doing it for yourself, like really just try to be proud that you got some of those uh, checked off. And then try to aim. Don't just focus on Facebook. Like Mix it up. Uh, maybe Sunday. For me, um, I dedicate the weekend to Pinterest, because again, if in case I go on the curl your hair, cat tangent video trend thing, I have like the justification to say I did six hours of nothing. Um, so <laughs> I usually do Pinterest on the weekends because it's the fun kind of girly side of a company. It's still girly, I don't care what anyone says, it's the girly social media platform. Um, but yeah, more, peop more and more people are on it. Okay, yeah. so the second question was, which social media sites do you think provide the most link juice in terms of SEO? Um, okay. Um, so, oh God, so hate metrics. Uh, I probably didn't get into that. So here's my reason why I don't like metrics, because you're focusing on the wrong thing at the wrong time, right? Like right now you need to be worried about who you are as a company. Um, don't measure yourself yet. Uh, work on creating the right brand voice and the right stories, and eventually when you're ready, that stuff will become incredibly important, but you've already nailed the important stuff, right? Uh, but anyways, there are, it depends. It's so specific to what you, you do, right? So like if you're a dating website, I don't know, like 
I recommended Reddit. Um, there's so many things I don't know about dating, but I would probably go to <laughs> look up all of the, uh, the columns, like the newspaper columns, like who find out where their Twitter handles are. Like someone's probably paying attention to like Ask Jane. Is that, a, is that a thing? I don't know. There's an Ask Jane Judy. I don't know what the name is. It's probably like an actual person who does this, and I don't know. Uh, Sex and the City reference, can't even think of the person who is in that that is the writer for a sex column. But her, I would follow that person <laughs> all over social, whatever her name is. Is it obvious that I have not seen Sex and the City right now? Yeah, I'm aware that it existed and it's important to my people's being with women. So, yes. Yeah. If you're interested in knowing how strong someone's you know, link juice is going to be back to you, you can go to uh, opensiteexplorer.com. And cloud. And that'll tell you the domain authority of that website. So yeah. for example, I was consulting with a doctor group and they had a huge list of like directories they could do. And we prioritize them by the highest domain authority because that'll give, th that's like a rank in Google's eyes for how uh, authoritative that website is. So mm -hmm. uh, cloud.com also should be immediately um, on your radar. Um, that will t uh, pull out on all of your social media platforms and tell you who are the people who are talking about you, who are the ones who have the highest clout score, so their influence score. Clout is influence. Um, so it's going to tell you, um, like I think my score right now is like, during after uh, the Home Alone thing, I think I, I went up like 10 points for a solid month just because more and more people were tuned in. But the truth is like you can find out who's the important people to go to on your Twitter account and what they're interested in. You can then keep following them to find out what they're talking about, who they're following. It's like an endless tunnel of information. You can just keep finding out more and more about what might help you out. That's okay. Um, you want to repeat your question in case there are yeah. people Is there a, a, a difference between product versus service in the social media as far as? Uh, no. No. I don't think so. Um, I think, for example, there's a lot of things that I think it's too, in the service is being there to talk about your product, right, too. So like a lot of what your, your involvement in being on social is, if your product has any questions, you're there to respond. And I think it's different, people are going to have different ways of being on social, like you are not created identically here. Um, so for example, like maybe all your businesses on Twitter is answering questions, right? Um, maybe all you're doing is talking about, um, I don't know if you're a social media coach or something like that, like you're going to talk about th like articles that are important and related to your business that maybe you didn't write, that you, but you want your people, like your followers to know what's happening. And I think it's just, uh, you find out what your purpose is, and you might not even know what it's going to be when you start doing it, but very quickly you'll figure it out because you're going to find out what's more important, uh, who's responding to you, what they're talking about. Um, I generally think on any uh, platform, uh, you're going to change what you're talking about. And I think it's, you try to be fun. You don't always talk about what it is you're doing, right? So sometimes you're promoting, and most of the time responding, and then sometimes about the Super Bowl. And last question for me. Yes. How do you quantify as far as the expense of doing all this with, at the end of the day, that's, it's creating a client, it's creating a paying client. So how do you connect both to say, to justify? To justify the mean? <sighs> See, this is the metric part that I don't, like, it's such a long game, and I think that's why I get mad with metrics, right? Like, I hate that people think they have to measure themselves on a daily, <laughs> weekly, monthly basis. They're looking for, like, the immediate, like, why am I spending my time doing this? And I don't think that that exists. Um, go ahead, sorry. As an R&D expense, or an R&D investment, um, I do it for clients. I do it for me, yeah. and I don't think that it, it's really sustaining it. As opposed to, well, I sent a tweet out. To you. <coughs> you just never, you just never know. But I think that you have to have an element of faith in it. It's, a, uh, it's, it's an R&D project. It's like writing jokes, right? Like 90% of the time they're not going to be funny, 10% of the time you're really going to nail it, but the times that you nail it, that's what helped you. Um, so for example, uh, oh god, I'll give you my favorite social media story. It was, I love this story and I love this brand and I want so much to know what actually happened. But uh, this girl, just a random person, uh, she tweeted 
that she loved chocolate so much she was going to follow um, Kit Kat and Oreo, Oreo on Twitter. Like she linked in both. Ten minutes later, um, Kit Kat responds with a tic tac toe board. Um, with on the bottom corner is a picture of two Kit Kats crossed, and then says, uh, "Your move next, Oreo." Oreo responds ten minutes later. Um, <laughs> ten minutes later, and the Kit Kat bar is missing from the tic tac toe board, and it all it has is crumbs, and it says, "Give me a break." Like, give us some break. And it was just like, the thing was, that was meant for one person who did not even have an impressive follower list. She maybe had like 100 people, no big deal. She's just somebody. You, if you treat that as if a potential, like, one, it's authentic because you think it's funny and it's cute. Like, those are your people. Those are people following your brand. And yes, people are still talking about the story. And for the next two months after that happened, it was such a big deal. It was like, who's, like, everyone wanted to know what was the ad, uh, like, who's running their social? Like, is it the same team? Uh, we were imagining, at the time I was working at Syncaps, and we were imagining them like being side-by-side -side computers, like both brands being managed, and they, they planned this whole thing out. And the truth is, like, I still don't know who did it, but the point is, like, you should always be thinking like that, and it, it's clever and sweet, but it may not have taken off. It could have never been noticed. The girl had, like, 100 followers. Maybe everyone wasn't paying attention that day because they were too busy paying attention to ask JPMC going badly, right? So the point is, there's no, no for sure... Uh, method of success, you just hope that it's going to work out. But that became viral, right? And it was huge, but it was only with the intent for organic growth, right? So, and that's what I'm saying, like, <sighs> that's why I don't like metrics. I think um, it's so important that, like, that those moments are allowed to happen because you care about it, and it'll probably pay off. And if you're clever and you hire a very good community manager who you trust enough to know everything about your brand and be, like, your number two, but then also have a sense of humor or a light side of your company, I really think you're going to nail it. Um, and yeah, like, just go for it. Yes, my lady. So you've explained to me, you know, in the past couple of days, uh, the importance of content and having content every day. Mm -hmm. um, do you want to kind of talk about how do you go about generating content when you feel a little bit like, I don't, I don't know what am I supposed to do today? Like, I have nothing. Um, yeah. Just why that's so important and... Yeah, 100%. Have so uh, I have told Julie uh, she has no excuse not to have content and great content because she works in a place where there's something always happening. There's always someone to talk about here, right? There's always a company you could do a spotlight on. There's always some ridiculous robot art you could put up on your Instagram yeah, page. Right. Like, if anything, you should feel like your brain's exploding because you don't even know where to start because you have so much stuff to talk about. The average person, the average company probably is struggling to figure out what to say. Um, that is okay, but that's also why I give giving you the clearance to talk about who you are as a team. Um, so for example, there's no decent story today that you think relates to your audience. You can personally post about what Joe's doing today and who Joe is, and we just hired this really cool graphics guy and we want to give him his moment in the sun. Like we're really glad to have this guy on our team. Um, this is a link to his portfolio. Like you think of that and you constantly want to get out there, um, get to know your city. If your company is specifically very location specific in San Antonio, um, talk about what's happening in your city. So the cocktail classic that happened, right? Like care enough, uh, if you want people to care about your business, you should care about them. So sometimes uh, it's talking about other people and nothing to do with yourself and I think that's pretty much 80% of it. Um, but, and it just kind of happens organically. But um, also, I used to, as I told you, I build content calendars very loosely. Um, I know what events are coming up. I know that Christmas happens every year, right? So like there's no excuse to know that Christmas is coming up. Uh, people might like that time of year. Uh, there's a whole month of things you can do for content pieces coming up with Christmas. You can plan that out in advance. You might not be able to plan out in advance someone stopping by your company that changes your world, right? So that's something that you just hop on. You adjust your content calendar accordingly. Um, but there's a lot of stuff you can get out of the way early on. And the hard part is sitting down and realizing that you have to spend maybe uh, three weeks building a loose content calendar for the next year. But I recommend doing it. And then you just kind of fill in the blocks. Um, but yeah. Anybody else? Okay. The one thing I'll say also on the content calendar before I totally wrap it up is um, I don't also write my post in advance for a year. What I do is I do themes. So I'll say something like on Friday I like to do you know, a uh, post, I want to try to find a post that means something related to my company, right? Or I'll be like, on 
the tenth, I'm going to do something that's funny, right? So I'll put like a general idea, a message across, and so on my Google Calendar, it will say like, "Haha, funny post, LOL memes, like a memes, right?" So like that's what I'll do, um, and then I go back and I try to write it as far in advance, so like maybe two weeks I plan, but I never do it in a whole year. I just kind of map out a general guideline and then hope that I can stick to it. But I really, yeah. I actually use I do I use Google Calendar because it's something that's linked on my phone and I know I'm not going to like misplace it. So, it'll show up every day on my calendar of what day I what I was doing. It's also a really good way to remind yourself that you haven't done something. So, I use the same thing that I would plan all of my actual meetings in, right? Yeah, there's some really good like to-do app stuff that's great. Um, I like to use those. Uh, I really like, I, I want it so bad for the Microsoft phones to take off. I'm still really hard pressing because I, I love some of the, like, was it, uh, God, um, Microsoft Note, is that right? Because one of my favorite apps, it shouldn't be, but it is. Uh, anyways, there's really great ways, and that's what I like to drop ideas. I had Julie um, create multiple Google, um, Google Docs, and what she does is she has one to throw in ideas, right? One to just throw in like actual post formation. And these things are great because they can be edited by multiple people. Um, so you can just send the link and have people go back and check what you're doing. Um, I've also had her create on her desktop um, places to image drop, like just dump pictures of people at Geekdom, pictures of the pictures around Geekdom, right? Like for the opportunity when she's looking for something and then properly take the time to label them. So like, um, so you know when you're looking, oh, I have this really cool quote post. Wouldn't it be cool if that robot down the hall said it? Right, so then you go to it, pull it up, use the quote that you found, done. Um, and then you'll find your own quirky ways to make it fast and important. And when it first starts, you're gonna go real slow. So, and eventually you won't even think before, you won't even think to check on Twitter. You're just gonna be like, go, 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 go. So, yeah. Uh, thank you guys for coming, though. I <laughs> I'm sad you guys missed my last two uh, amazing picture posts, but they're really not, they didn't add any value. But thanks for coming, you guys. Yeah. So yeah, squad Ryan, first 10 people. And now it's over, and I'll go into my